guys, how's it going? So today I'm making a Christmas wreath for one of our new neighbors. They just recently finished building a house right behind our vegetable garden, actually. They've been building for much of the growing season and they just finished, just moved in, and I haven't had a chance to take them a welcome to the neighborhood gift. So kind of a perfect time of year to make them a wreath and then also a great opportunity, I thought, to walk back through the basics of making a wreath because it's been a while since we've done that. And it's really not as involved of a process as you might think. I remember feeling very intimidated by this. Uh, when I started making wreaths, but once you start, you know, you've made one, two, three, four, five wreaths, you realize it's quite a bit easier than you maybe once thought. So let me run through the supplies that you're gonna need. You'll need a wreath form of some kind, and they'll come looking a little bit different, possibly depending on where you can source them. This is the type that my parents' garden center carries, and the type I've always built on, so it's a two wire, it's very kind of stiff. You might find them a little bit thicker than that, and that's totally fine. And you could use something more decorative too, like you could use a grapevine, kind of base, grapevine wreath base, and that way you don't have to get your greens as thick because your form looks pretty, so that's totally up to you. Then you need some kind of wire. Um, I use 22 gauge paddle wire. It's very flexible. I like that it's on a round paddle. I find that it comes off a lot easier um, on this style of paddle. And then I'm using my Felcos to do all of my trimming. Then you need something to put on the wreath. And this is kind of where you can get very elaborate or you can keep it very simple. So the best place to source stuff for your wreath is in your own garden. If you've got some evergreens out there, some branches with berries, we just did a video, in fact, um, featuring 11 categories of plants that have berries on them. So if you haven't seen that, check that out because if you can start planting things in your garden with some of these kind of off-season projects in mind, it's really fun to be able to go out and gather from your own space. You can also check with your local garden center. If you have one that stays open year round, oftentimes they're the type that are carrying Christmas trees and wreaths and they'll have a source. That's where I sourced all of this stuff. I ordered this through my parents' garden center and I've got a mixture. I've got some noble fir tips right here. Beautiful, they smell amazing. I've got princess pine, which is a really flexible, really elegant looking uh, addition, I think, texture wise. Then we've got incense cedar. I, this has always been a favorite of mine because of the little texture on the end, the little yellow, I don't know if those are seed pods or what they are, but they're beautiful. And then also some variegated holly that has berries on it. You can also check with your local florist if your garden center doesn't carry them. I know ours um, here in our town, I order magnolia leaves and eucalyptus through them uh, if I need them for a specific project. So that's basically all you need are just these three things here and then whatever you wanna build your wreath out of. What I'll do is I'll get the wreath started and then the whole like construction process is pretty much the same. Uh, and then we'll stop before I get ready to end it. I think that's where the most questions kind of arise. But what you'll do is you'll take your paddle wire and you'll attach it to your wreath form and you wanna make sure that it is good and tight. Um, so I will try not to shake the table too much. <laughs> I didn't realize it was so shaky. And I'm just going to wrap this around a bunch of times so that we don't have any chance of it coming off. Okay. So you can see I've got my paddle wire attached right there and I've got it set to the outside. Um, that works better for me. I am right-handed, so I don't know how this is gonna translate <laughs> for you lefties out there. My mom's left-handed, so it was always hard for us to like demonstrate for each other how to do things. But once your paddle wire is attached, you will not cut it until the very end. So keep that in mind. It's one continuous piece of wire all the way around. So then what you're gonna do is start building your individual bundles and to do this, you're gonna take all of your different elements. I've got the fir, the pine, and you can put these together however you want. Uh, I've got the cedar and the holly, like whatever order you want, but look how pretty that is. Keeping in mind that whatever size your bundles are, your little bundles, that'll indicate what size of wreath you end up with in the end. Um, to give you an idea, this is a 14 inch wreath form uh, and you can find them all the way from real little to really big, depending on where you're wanting to display them. Um, but the first one, we lay down right on top of the wire. And then we're gonna wrap this paddle wire around three times really tightly. Oops, keeping in mind that these greens, as they dry, they will desiccate a little bit. They'll kind of pucker up a bit. And if our wire is not tight enough, stuff can fall out. So gotta do it tight. Is that three times? Yes. So our first bundle is attached. Let me get a second bundle real quick. There's our fir, our pine. Gosh, I love this cedar, it's so pretty. 
And there's our holly. So now with this second bundle, I'm going to overlap it over this first bundle, but I'm going to face it slightly outward. Um, that way we don't end up with a really skinny wreath. I want it to have some thickness to it and then we're gonna attach it. So we'll go around three times. Like that. And then I'll show you the third bundle and then it's basically just a repeat of everything I just did. So we've got our spruce, fir, not spruce, pine, cedar. I want some berries on this piece. And then our third bundle will be faced slightly inward, still overlapping that second bundle. So that's basically it. What we're gonna do for the rest of the wreath is just go out, in, out, in, out, in, making sure to keep our bundles about the same size so that we end up with a nice hole in the middle. If you do too thick of bundles and you face them too far inward, you'll end with kind of a, a thick mass and you won't have a very good hole in the middle. Um, so just keep that in mind. And once we get to the end, we'll stop and I'll show you how to end it up. Okay guys, so I got the wreath to a point where I am ready to end it. So if you look at it right here, you can see my paddle wire is still attached up here and I've got a little bit of a hole still uh, with some room for a few more greens. At this point, you could just cut the wire off. You'd want your tail to be rather long, wrap it around a few times and then tie it off somewhere on the back. Um, and then you could put a big old bow right there or you could put your wreath hanger right there and then a bow um, just to kind of hide that little gap. And a lot of people do it that way because it, it's a little less effort. But if you're wanting just a complete look for your wreath, um, this part is a little, like it takes maybe a few more minutes than the rest of the bundles that you've done, but I usually just find a bigger, like puffier piece of evergreen, whatever variety you're using. And I start just kind of weaving them in. Like you can see, here's my first bundle. Pardon the sap on my hands. And this is my last bundle I just put on. So I'm gonna weave this piece in right there to kind of bridge that gap. And we're going to attach it with wire. So we're basically just going to start attaching individual pieces to this section until we like the way it looks. So let's just do that a few times. It won't take much because see how much that one piece just filled in. So we'll need another one up here and then maybe some decorative stuff up top. And then you can also use hot glue. I do have my hot glue gun all revved up. There is no shame in popping little pieces here or there with a little bit of hot glue if you have a hole or you just want a little bit more like berry interest somewhere that you maybe missed, or if you wanna fix the ending. So let's see how far I can get this one. Okay, another puffy piece. I'm gonna weave that one right on, in on this side. Yeah, that looks really good. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a piece of pine to this too so that we've got the same textures throughout and a piece of cedar, ha, huh, right there. Okay, and then I'm gonna, my wire is still attached. And I'm going to just weave this one in and around the branches. Okay, so let me show you where it's at right now. So I've done the first little piece and then I did my second little bundle there. And now I am missing holly. And then I do want a little bit more puff kind of up toward the top area here to kind of bring it level with the rest. Okay, so without picking the wreath up and hanging it, because that's usually the, the time when you can see if you need to fill in any gaps, I think this wreath is pretty much done. So when you're ready to end it, what you do is you cut like a 12 to 18 inch long tail of paddle wire, 
like that. So that's our first cut of wire. Like that is one huge long piece of wire to make this wreath. I'm going to wrap it around one more time just to get it to the back. And then we are gonna kind of flip our wreath over. And you can lay it down if you want to, or just hold it if you can manage that. And then we're going to find a spot along the back where you can see the wreath form. And we're gonna just start wrapping this wire back around and around and around until it's really secure. And when you're doing this whole thing, you wanna make sure you're not pulling the wire so tight that you break it. <laughs> I've done that before. And then also I remember my mom telling me a story once about she worked at a florist for quite a number of years. And she said when she was learning, the guy that was teaching her, he would take her pieces and throw them up against a wall. And he said, that's how you know you've put it together right if you don't have pieces falling out. Now I'm not gonna do that today. <laughs> um, and I, I probably wouldn't recommend that method, but I mean, I can imagine that was a good teaching tool so you make sure that your stuff's secure. Okay. So there we have it. How does it look? Pretty good, I think. So at this point, you can either be done or you can individually wire in little pieces here and there if you want to or use your glue gun. But I think it turned out really pretty. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is uh, spray it with some Welt Stop, which I have around here somewhere. So this is Welt Stop. It's a natural pine resin based product that you can spray on arrangements like this or if you're doing containerized winter arrangements where you're popping greens down in containers, it helps prevent moisture loss and it keeps them nicer for a lot longer. Um, it keeps them nice and pliable and not dried out and like kind of brown looking. And all you have to do is just kind of give it one of these. It comes out a little bit milky, but it dries clear and you don't need a ton. It has a, a very pine-ish smell too. It's, it's quite pleasant. Um, so that will help keep this nice for a lot longer. I, I've also sprayed this on like boxwoods that I've trimmed out in the garden. Uh, and you can spray it on all kinds of evergreens and stuff like that just to help with winter kill and wind burn and stuff like that. So anyway, so that's it you guys. Those are the basic steps to making your own holiday wreath. And like I said, you can get really fancy with it and you can add in dried fruit or nuts or pine cones. You can use all kinds of different things out of your own garden, berry branches, grass seed heads, interesting seed heads off of other perennials. Um, or you could just use one type of green. I think that would be very simple and peaceful looking. It's really a fun thing because you can make it unique to you. So anyway, I hope this video was fun uh, to watch and I hope that it was helpful. And if you give it a try, definitely tag me on social media so I can see what you've come up with. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.